Good afternoon and welcome to Michigan Tech and welcome to Houghton. We're very glad you're here today. Uh, my name is uh, Deborah Charlesworth. I'm going to be your MC for this afternoon and I'll introduce myself a little bit more uh, as we go through the presentation. But first I'd like to introduce the Dean of the Graduate School, Dr. Will Cantrell, for some opening remarks. Thank you. It's my privilege to welcome all of you to, some of you to the United States, some of you to Michigan, Houghton, and all of you to Michigan Technological University, although I know some of you, it's been a short trip because you were undergraduates here. Uh, some of you came from halfway around the world, perhaps. So I've been doing this a couple of years now, and I, I want to just impress upon you where all of you are coming from. So by a show of hands, how many of you are from North America? South America? No, okay, none. Europe? Africa? Asia? Australia? And I, I try this every year, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, I know none of you are from Antarctica, but has anybody been to Antarctica? <laughs> okay. So, I've been doing this for a couple of years now, asking for a show of hands to see where everybody is from, because I want you all to see that we're really a global community here, but more importantly, we're a community of scholars. You are embarking upon your graduate education here at Michigan Tech, and we're very happy that you've chosen Michigan Tech, and we'll talk a little bit more about how we will support you and help you in your endeavors here. But I just wanna stress that we are very pleased to welcome you to our community. And again, we wanna support you in any way that we can. And we'll take the next few minutes to give you a preview of some of the things that we can and will do for you and with you. But again, welcome and Enjoy. I promise it will snow more. <laughs> if you live here long enough, you either learn to enjoy snow a lot or not at all. So sometimes that could be a promise or a threat there. I don't know, that could be a, a double-edged sword. Um, anyway, so uh, my name, as I said, is uh, Dr. Deborah Charlesworth. Uh, most of the students call me Dr. Deb, and you can feel free to do that as well. Um, and I'm the Associate Dean in the Graduate School. So my role in the Graduate School is really to oversee all of the student services that we offer um, to our students. Um, I organize our, our new student orientation along with all of our staff, uh, pitch in on that event as well and the training that we offer. So I know a number of you have already been uh, enrolled in the Orientation to Graduate Studies and Research course. I'll talk a little more about that in a bit, um, but I organize and oversee that. Um, I also work on review of theses and dissertations, and we'll be talking a little bit more about that as well. Uh, and then I also work to make sure that your experience here is as smooth uh, and efficient as possible. Um, there's always things we can do to improve that. So we're always looking to develop things that are either automated or lean processes, if you're familiar with um, the lean technologies um, that a lot of companies and universities use. So uh, one of the things that I want to let you all know about is our orientation to graduate studies and research uh, training that we have available for you. Um, this is an online course in Canvas that will show up on your Canvas homepage. If you were enrolled in classes, registered for classes before the holiday break, you should be in that class already. Um, if you started to enroll in classes after that time point, I didn't want to enroll anyone over Christmas because we were closed and you were likely traveling or enjoying some time with your family. And so I didn't want to add to the, that stress. But either today or Monday, I'll get everybody who's registered after the last time I put people in the class uh, into that training. 
The course that you're enrolled in is based on your program's admissions decision. So if you are a PhD student or a master's student that's been accepted into a research-based program, meaning you'll complete a thesis or report as part of your training, um, that that will be a different course than the students that are in coursework. So if you're comparing notes with your friends, that's why there's different courses that are out there. Um, the coursework one is a little more um, streamlined and focused on what coursework students need to know. And the research one has additional things that research students need to know. So it's tailored to your needs. This is containing material that's federally required. So the federal government requires that we provide training of this sort to students. Uh, and so it is a responsibility for us to track and ensure that you complete this. Uh, and so you will need to complete it by the seventh week of the semester. So you have plenty of time uh, to do it, but it does need to be completed. Otherwise, a registration hold will be placed on your account. But it introduces you to both our policies and the graduate school and some things that we think are really important about like what advisors can do for you and what advisors expect of you and what are some of the different rules and regulations about collaboration and plagiarism and all sorts of things that are really important to start you off on the right foot at Michigan Tech, um, but also then you know, other policies and procedures at the university. So a lot of you are going to be doing a dissertation or thesis or report as part of your um, training here, education. And so I wanted to give kind of a brief overview of that because we usually get some questions on it. Um, but the brief overview, and there's a lot more that goes into this, is that if you're doing one of those programs, if you haven't already, you will be engaged in finding a research advisor. And typically that's in your first or second semester of, of your enrollment here at Michigan Tech. And my advice to you, based on working with students and completing one myself, uh, is to look for a project that you enjoy, something that you like, and that furthers your career goals. So if you want to work in the automotive industry, doing something in biology probably won't further your career goals. So just making sure those things align so that when you're complete with that project, you have the skills and techniques that you can market to your future employer. And in order to do that, you should learn about the research that's done by the faculty at Michigan Tech in your area. And so on our website, we have a graduate faculty locator and you can see all the graduate faculty at Michigan Tech and you can search for people based on your interests. You can also look at your department web pages and see you know, what are the faculty interests and what kinds of papers have they published and what kinds of things are they working on. I also really advise you to talk to students in those research groups. They will tell you what it's like to work with that faculty member. And just as important as picking a project that works for you and that furthers your career goals is finding a mentor who you can work with and who understands your needs and who is going to support you in the way you'd like to be supported in terms of, you know, how much time they have available for meeting with you, how often they like to meet with students, how do they like to meet with students. All of these things are different kind of work styles and finding an advisor whose work style meshes with yours, at least on some overlapping level, will be helpful for you as you go forward in your career. And ideally, then you talk to several different faculty members about you know, what openings they have, what kinds of projects they have, what kinds of funding they might have available, how they like to work with students, do they have room for students, and then being able to select that advisor that will meet those needs for you. Once you have that advisor, and that really is the most important and critical part of this procedure, um, you then will conduct a research project. You'll summarize and defend that research in a written document. Uh, and then that's part of your defense and that's how you finish that research degree. If you do want to learn more about that every single semester, generally the third week of the semester, and that includes summer, so you don't have to do it this semester, um, but if you're really interested, you can do it this semester or any other semester after this. We offer a seminar where we talk about how to submit and format those documents. And it's a lot more details and a lot more stuff than you need to know right away. But I just want to make sure I introduce the concept that we will be providing support and guidance to you about that process. As you go through your degree program, it's really important for you to stay informed and on track. Nobody cares about your degree completion more than you do. It's your responsibility to take care of the things you need to take care of in order to finish your degree. 
And so at Michigan Tech, we have the My Michigan Tech system, uh, which is a web page portal that you can look at. And it will tell you all the things that you need to do right now and all the things that you need to do for your degree in its entirety. So you can see a checklist right now of those things. Um, it actually won't be live for you until uh, about a week from today because it takes the first week of registration and enrollment to build some of the things in place for your degree schedule. Um, but as of like next Friday, you'll be able to go on my Michigan Tech and see your specialized um, portal. Um, you're also going to be checking your Michigan Tech email. Um, Michigan Tech email is the email we will be using to communicate with you. So it's really important that you use that as your primary email for communicating with the graduate school and for asking us questions, because that's how we know it's a verified Michigan Tech person and not your evil twin who's decided to send an email on your behalf. You will find all the current forms and information on our website. So we'd really encourage you to go to our website for those forms. Don't just take a form that somebody else submitted three semesters ago and change some stuff up and send it in. We've made a lot of changes over the last year. Pretty much every single form we have is brand new right now. Um, we made some significant changes in the fall. So make sure you go online whenever you need a form to fill out uh, and find that form online because it'll be the most current one. And again, please complete that training so that you don't get that registration hold on your account. Um, it doesn't take a lot of time, but it will take some time, but you have seven weeks, so you have plenty of time to do it. And if you have questions at any time about your degree progress, we really are here to help you and support you. And the grad school email there is where you can reach all of the staff. So all the staff that we're gonna introduce you to today have access to that email. So rather than remembering which person to contact or who's on vacation or who's not on vacation or who's in town or who's not in town, sending an email to that email address will make sure that somebody who's available will help you and assist you. And so that's really the most important email for you to remember moving forward. Um, next, I'd like to introduce um, Karen Hax. She's not able to be with us today in person, but you can see um, her picture there. Um, she's our coordinator of degree services. So she provides support for all of, of you, for advisors, for grad program directors and assistants. And she's the one who's going to process all of your curriculum changes and all of your forms. So if you're adding or dropping programs, if you're adding grad certificates, um, she'll be doing a lot of that work for you. Now, if you want to, as a grad student, if you want to say you're a master's student in mechanical engineering, if you want to get a master's degree in electrical, you're going to need to apply brand new to that program. But if you're getting, for example, a PhD in one program and you want to get a master's along the way, that's where Karen will help you and, and get the paperwork in line for that. Um, but the degree schedule is one of the most important forms you fill out. That's a list of courses that you need to complete your degree. Karen looks over all of those. If you have any transfer credits, Karen will be the one who will transfer those credits in from another university. Um, for our PhD students, um, she'll, for, she'll be processing your candidacy petition, petitions. And if you do end up leaving the university and coming back, she'll handle your readmission process. So she's kind of the one who handles sort of all the nuts and bolts forms that are needed for you to earn your degree. Um, she does announce PhD and thesis defenses. So when those uh, announcements come out, that's what Karen's doing. Um, she maintains your academic history. She processes your suspension appeals. If you happen to get suspended, not many of you will, but there will be a few. And if, if you do, that will uh, be something that we'll work on with her. Uh, also every year, the programs will tell us what courses count towards their curriculum. She manages that process. And she'll audit all your degree requirements and. She'll, she will award your degree. So Karen's a very important person to be nice to because at the end of the day, she's the one who's going to say whether you finish or not uh, and award that degree. So make sure you pay attention to any emails from her in particular, because if she's sending you an email, it's because you need to do something to finish your degree and you don't want to miss out on finishing your degree because you missed a form or forgot to do something that's required. So next, I'd like to introduce uh, Tiffany Jager, who we'll talk to you. She's our manager of student outreach and retention. Thank you and welcome all to Michigan Tech. Um, as Deb said, my name is Tiffany Jagger. I'm the manager of student outreach and retention. What that means is I basically know that you are all here to prioritize your academics, but we understand that things do come up, life happens. And so I'm here to help you try to navigate circumstances that may come up 
while you are studying, researching, and um, trying to obtain your degree. Um, these things can be academic issues, personal concerns, um, and emergencies that might come up along the way. Um, I also do some different workshops. We do difficult conversations through the grad school um, and can assist in professional development. Um, and then, you know, just provide you the resources on campus. There's a lot of different departments. There's a lot of staff to navigate, faculty, um, and just really try to make that uh, easier process for you and um, ensure your success. You can find me on the um, first floor of the administration building um, in the Dean of Students office, uh, offices. Um, my office number is 153. Um, some things to um, just kind of think about as you're going along this semester um, are, you know, attending your classes, getting to your classes, making sure that you're keeping up on your schoolwork, your exams, um, and, you know, any group projects, research that you might be involved in. And like I said, things do come up, so you might have to miss some classes. Um, we have an excused absence policy. Um, and that is all online with a request form in the instance of um, any representation of a university, um, representing the university at a, uh, an event, uh, any extenuating circumstances or for medical reasons that could include physical or mental health related reasons. Um, you will want to communicate with your instructors on what's going on. And you want to do that early, right? It's much better to be proactive and communicate with your instructors than try to communicate with them your circumstance in retrospect. So the earlier, the better. Talk to your instructors um, and talk to the graduate school if something does come up. Um, I also work with students if they need to drop courses or withdraw from classes. Um, things that you want to consider um, are fin financial aid, um, or if you are a funded student. Um, the graduate school does require continuous enrollment, so it would be a conversation on what that looks like for you and what would be best moving forward. Um, the medical withdrawal process is a little bit different, um, again, depending on the documentation that's provided. Um, and what um, status you are, whether you're domestic, international, or a student athlete. Um, I work closely with the Center for Mental Health and Wellbeing, um, again, just to ensure your success, whether that's your mental health, your physical health. Um, there are many resources that we provide a 24-7 TELUS Health. Um, it's an online virtual app that you have access to. Um, we also have individual counseling that we can get set up through the Center for Mental Health and Wellbeing. And there are uh, graduate group sessions. Um, the time is to be determined. So I know it says Thursdays there. That was last semester. Um, so we're still working on coordinating that, but we will put that information out for you when that is determined. Um, I also oversee the um, food pantry, which is in Fisher Hall. Um, it's not too far from here. I can, that way, I believe. Yep. <laughs> I get disoriented still. Um, which you can fill out the form online, uh, or you can contact the email huskyfan at mtu.edu. Um, this is not a free grocery store. It is meant for students who are in need, um, and it's meant to kind of alleviate some of that financial burden you might be experiencing in times of um, stress, financial stress, uh, or financial insecurity. Again, we also have um, resources such as emergency funds that students can resource um, in times of need. Um, again, we do need documentation for this, um, but we can offer those things on a yearly basis. So um, there's a lot of more information. I don't want to get into the weeds too much with that, but it is all on our website as well. 
And then I also work closely with the center or student disability services. Um, if you have a documented disability, we can work with you to set up accommodations, to work with your instructors, um, depending on what you may need. Um, so the information for student disability services is there, but you can also contact me and I can help coordinate those communications. That's all for me. Sarah Isaacson is also not able to be here today herself, um, but she is our Graduate Language Assessment and Support Program Director. And so she provides support through GLASS and WriteD. Uh, and we do have at the table over there representatives from WriteD and GLASS. So if you have questions about those services after I've gone through uh, my little introduction, they'd be happy to fill you in on more of that information. Um, but graduate language assessment and support is working on language through conversations that matter. And so this particular program is for our international students who would like to have more experience and practice in, in their oral communication skills. And so they would attend a weekly one hour individual appointment for the semester to practice. Uh, and so this could be someone who's preparing to be a GTA and who wants to have a little bit more experience before they go in front of their classroom. It could also just be someone who wants to have more practice and experience. So you don't have to have any, there's no requirement. Everyone's open who's an international student to participate in this. Um, students can work on defending a thesis or dissertation or interviewing for a job. And it's a way to help students gain confidence in their communication skills. It's also a good way for you to learn about Michigan tech and American and US customs and cultures, because that's also a component of the program. Um, you can sign up by going into the administration building room 405 and there's actually a paper sign with all the slots that are available so students can walk over and select a slot that works for them. Write D is our writing program called Writing in the Discipline. And the goal for that program is to help graduate students gain the skills they need to write major projects like research proposals, um, journal articles, and dissertations. And so faculty in your department or program will help guide that along with the facilitator in the program. And the students will meet on a regular basis to kind of keep themselves accountable for their writing, as well as to seek support and guidance from each other and from the faculty in their department. Those are the departments that have current uh, Write D groups. If your department is not listed, contact Sarah and she can either set you up to attend a group that maybe more closely matches your, uh, your discipline, or perhaps talk to your department about setting up a Write D program in that department. She also works with students who are doing uh, funding applications. So for students, for example, applying for the National Science Foundation Graduate Research Fellowship Program, or a Michigan Space Grant Consortium Program or the DOD Smart Scholarship. So if, if there's a fellowship or fellowship program or opportunity that you're applying for, uh, she helps students uh, submit their applications for that. Any student who's applying for fellowship funding, and this yeah. continues on if you're a faculty member applying for grant support, for example, um, really nobody does this alone. So if you're thinking about applying for one of these fellowships that's competitive, it really would be in your best interest to ask for help because nobody really does a successful proposal without collaborating with at least a few other people. And so she's one of the people that can help support you with that. Um, and so that's her picture. She's in the administration building room 405. And again, if you have questions about write D or glass, um, we do have representatives over there who can talk to you more specifically about that. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Laura Bullitt, our Vice President for Student Affairs. Hello and welcome to Michigan Tech. I'm so excited to see so many new students out here. What I wanted to do today is give you a little bit of an overview of what the Student Affairs area is and the support that we can offer to you. Because we know that for you to be successful as a student here, it's not just how successful you are in the classroom. Your success in academics depends on your overall well-being, and that's out-of-class activities, support like Tiffany mentioned um, through her office or through our Center for Student Mental Health and Well-Being. So I want to make sure that you have a good overview of all of our services. So within Student Affairs, we um, 
as a university, we're organized with academic affairs and student affairs. So academic affairs, those are your academic departments, the graduate school. Um, on the student affairs side of things, we are the non-academic pieces that support you through all of this. Hang on a second. There we go. Within our, uh, within our student affairs and our Dean of Students office, it's um, myself, Kelly Raffelli is our Associate Vice President and Dean of Students. And you met Tiffany earlier. Tiffany holds a joint appointment in both the Graduate School and the Dean of Students office. So she serves as an important conduit for you um, between the academic and the student affairs side of things. But Kelly and I are both available to you as well. Some of the areas that um, we oversee in student affairs, Center for Student Mental Health and Wellbeing, Tiffany talked about that earlier, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time with that. And if you need more information on how to access the TELUS Health app, that's an online virtual um, mental health support and wellness app that you have free use of, make sure you let Tiffany know and she'll help you with that. Our student leadership and involvement, that is our area that organizes our registered student organization. So those are the student groups, the student clubs that you can participate in. I know um, a lot of our graduate students participate in our Indian Student Association, our African Student Association, our Muslim Student Association, and others as well. Some of your departments will have professional organizations that are registered student organizations, and this is the office that supports you in that. This is the office that also oversees our Michigan Tech traditions, like homecoming, Winter Carnival, um, Kiwana Day that happens in the fall, Spring Involvement Fair that's going to happen in a couple of weeks that will introduce you to all of the student organizations. Those are all run through that office. Um, career Services, I'm not going to talk about that because you have some representatives from Career Services here to talk about that in a little bit. Um, international Programs and Services, I noticed a lot of you were indicating that you were you're from Asia or Africa. And so I assume that you've already had some really great contact with the IPS office. They are here obviously to support you with any of your immigration questions, your student visa questions that you have. If you need to leave to go home, you need to make sure that you consult with them before you leave the country. Uh, academic and community conduct. So, do they hear from academic conduct? In our orientation, yes. In orientation, yes, you will hear um, about academic conduct. So we have a student code of academic and community conduct. Those are the rules that govern you as a student um, in the classroom and out of the classroom, academically and behaviorally. Um, they're talking about academic integrity issues. So cheating and plagiarism are topics that are covered in that office. Um, if you have a conflict with a, another student, with a staff member, um, maybe even it's um, with your advisor, we do have a conflict resolution network that you can turn to to help you mediate those conflicts. Residence Education and Housing Services, for those of you that are living in Daniel Heights, that's your support for your housing when you're on campus. Um, our Water Center for Student Success, Tiffany talked a little bit about that student disability services already, but we do also offer some academic coaching uh, where we talk more, more generally rather than specifically about content. So academic coaching includes things like time management, um, how to be better at note-taking, how to read textbooks for comprehension. I assume that you are all here in graduate school because you have done those things very well. But as you're encountering more difficult material in your graduate level courses, if you have difficulty in some of those areas, this is the place to turn. Um, and then our student, our Center for Student, uh, excuse me, Center for Diversity and Inclusion is a separate uh, building house on campus. It's on the east side of campus called the Haymar House. It's a little white building kind of in the middle of a parking lot, but it's a very welcoming environment for all of our students, more of a family home type atmosphere. They have a, a living room space upstairs, a comfortable family room area downstairs where you can watch TV, hang out with friends. They sponsor some activities throughout the semester as well. Um, they also um, are affiliated with our McNair Scholars Program for the graduate school. And that's all about student affairs. So I'm gonna hand it over, I guess, to Carly. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Michigan Tech. 
I am Carly Westrom, and I'm this year's graduate student government president and a fellow graduate student. So graduate student government, we have eight executive board members. We have 30 department representatives from 19 departments. So whatever program you are in, you are going to have a representative from GSG. So this is our team for this year, including myself. Um, Genius over there with the camera is our, our PR chair, um, as well as the other members listed here from various departments that might be the same as yours. So what we do for graduate student government is a lot of things, but the main thing is advocating for graduate students, including yourself. We participate in various committees across campus, and these are some of um, previous committees that our representatives or other graduate students have served on. Other things we do besides advocating for graduate students include enrichment. Um, so kind of things beyond the classroom, things you're doing in your department. We host research events. In the summer, we have an alumni poster session. So alumni come here and we share our research with them. During the fall, we have a three minute thesis competition where graduate students present their research in three minutes or less. And coming up in the spring in March, we'll have our research colloquium. So we'll have a poster session and an oral session where students can share all of the great things they've been working on with their fellow classmates and people from other departments. Other things we have um, going on for graduate student government is workshops and seminars. So each semester we have different workshops in collaboration with the graduate school, different departments, um, faculty, professors, um, things of that nature like writing proposals or writing a paper, um, maybe planning for post-graduation what you're going to do. So graduate student government puts on a lot of these seminars and things that will help some supplement your education. We also have a lot of community events. So some, these are some of the, the great things we like to do together is movie nights or we'll have hopefully cross-country skiing if we get some more snow. Um, during the summer, we like to host kayaking events, zip lining. Um, one year we hosted an escape room in our grad common space um, that our social committee put together, which was really fun. Pottery painting. So all these fun things you can do alongside getting your degree here at Michigan Tech. Now, a lot of these events we host at Grad Commons. So this is a space across from the library. Um, welcome for graduate students. All you need is your student ID to get in and it's open from 6 a.m. to midnight every day of the week. Just tap in with your student ID and you can go and hang out with fellow classmates. You can work on projects here. There's a nice quiet space upstairs if you just need a spot to relax and decompress. But this is also where we host some of those social events. And today we're actually going to have a, a welcome party for all of you to come from 4.30 to 6. We'll have some snacks. Some of the GSG representatives will be there. Um, you can introduce yourself, get to know one another um, as you get ready for the start of the semester. So again, that's right across from the library. So a lot of people will probably just walk over there after this session here. So all of you are welcome to come and join. And kind of just as a guide, again, um, we're over here. So you can just walk across the street and right over to the O'Connor House is what it used to be called, right across from the library again. Other things um, that we have available for students is our travel and career enrichment grants. So if you plan to go to a conference while you're here at Tech, we do offer support for that. So you can apply for a 500 or 750 um, grant if you are presenting at a conference, 500 for domestic travel, internationally it would be 750. If you plan to just attend a conference, we offer support of up to $150. The career enrichment part is if you want to maybe attend an online seminar or some type of workshop online where we also provide $150 support for that. 
Other things that GSG is involved in is we have a mer uh, merit awards. We have four of them. So in the spring, at the end of the year, uh, we have nominations for merit awards, exceptional staff member, graduate mentor, student leader, and student scholar. So those are four awards we give out each year. And also other things we like to do is collaborate with different parties on campus. So different orgs, academic units, um, try to get together. One popular one is the IPS put on a Thanksgiving meal. We like to support that as well as other events that happen throughout the year. And if you see there, we have a picture of wellness packets, which is something we have on our table. So stop by after the presentations, come get a wellness packet. And the best part is there's a free GSG sticker. So, so that's part of the, the packet as well. Um, we do encourage involvement in GSG, but also um, like Laura was mentioning, we have many student orgs, um, welcome to everyone. So while you're here, get involved, get to know people. There's a lot of great people on campus. So we have cultural orgs, student orgs, identity orgs, um, and there's an involvement link as well. So if you just search involvement, student involvement on the Michigan Tech website, you can read more about some of these great things we have going on. Now, I know you've all been waiting, how to get involved with GSG. Well, of course, you can always email me at the GSG president email or the GSG in general, that also goes to me. But keep an eye out. Every Wednesday, we send out a weekly email about what's happening on campus, how you can get involved, what events are going on, important information. So on Wednesday, you should receive, or early Thursday, uh, receive something from your department rep saying what's going on on campus. Other ways to get involved is we have a general body meeting every other Tuesday at 515. Now that's open to anyone that wants to come. You can come in person or online. We also have a Zoom link and that will be provided in that weekly email as well. So our next meeting will be January 16th in the M&M building 610. So it's on the, the main floor there if you cross the street over that way. Um, you're more than welcome to come. We have free food and some great people. Um, other things that you want to know about is our website. Anything that I just described in this presentation is on our website as well. So information about the travel grants, um, how to get involved for social events that we host. Photos from those social events will be on the website. So definitely poke around on our website and look at all the things happening on there. And of course, if you ever want to talk with me or any of your um, GSG representatives, you can always come over to the Grad Commons and um, come to meet us. And last but not least, uh, we do have social media pages that Genius runs. He does a great job. Um, so QR code will um, link you to our Instagram and our Facebook. Do we have a LinkedIn? No, okay, no LinkedIn, YouTube channel, all of those things. So scan the QR code, follow us on Instagram, um, Genius posts a lot of great information on our web pages there. So I'll give everyone a moment if you're scanning that. All right. And with that, um, that final information about um, the welcome party today, again, it's all about um, you today in terms of this welcome party. So come and meet the GSG representatives. Some of the other eboard members will be there um, at Grad Commons across from the library. So with that, thank you. And up next. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Amy Zawada and I'm the Community and Business Development Director for the City of Houghton. Has everyone been downtown? Yeah? Well, well, welcome, you're our new residents. So this here is a picture of our pier, that's our newest addition and that's kind of been a fun focal point for some events we've had so far. Our physical address is 616 Sheldon Avenue and that's kitty corner from the post office um, it's also next to AT&T and Subway. So that's 
um, where we're located. That's where the bus stop is. You'll see that green bus stop sign. Um, you can come into the city center for a bus card. We can help you if you are um, living off campus and you have a utility bill, that's where you'll need to register for that. Um, the police department is also located in that office. And if you would need to buy a parking pass for anywhere, that's where you could get that as well. So basically any questions you have about the city, about being a resident, about any events, um, you could give us a call. You can send us an email there, info at cityofhoton.com. We have a website listed there as well, or we're also on Facebook and Instagram. So the transit bus. Punch cards can be purchased for $20 each, and that can be bought from a bus driver or at the city office. Um, at the table over there, I have a, a transit brochure and also the um, free on-demand uh, routes for, for you guys. So that is over at that table. Um, any questions, again, you can give us a call at the city, but the number for the on-demand pickup is listed there. And that means that the city bus will pick you up anywhere in the city of Houghton and bring you um, even into Hancock if you need to or um, all around. Downtown, um, that is where you'll find all of our downtown shopping, the city office, like I said, the post office, lots of dining, um, also bars, coffee shops. We have a full list of our business directory on the city of Houghton's website, so check that out. Our waterfront trail runs from actually Chassel all the way to the Chutes and Ladders, the Ray Kessner Waterfront Park. So you can hop on that at any point. You just have to go down to the water and it's a beautiful paved trail. It's great for exercising, but also as a way to get you downtown. Um, bikes are welcome on it. You'll see people walking and running. Um, you'll also see snowmobilers on it once we get a little bit more snow. So you have to share, share the lane with them. Um, also is the East Houghton Pavilion. So that would be the pavilion located um, in between here and the downtown area. There's a skate park there, a pavilion, there's bathrooms and showers as well. Um, there's also space for picnic tables and just kind of congregating and visiting. Chutes and Ladders is our park, which is located at the end of the trail. And that is another pavilion and there is, um, volleyball net there. There is kayak and stand up paddleboard rentals, swimming. Um, there's some grills if you'd like to grill out when the weather offers that. We also have um, some beanbag boards. So there's lots of opportunities for fun there. And there is bathrooms located there as well, as well as under the bridge if you're on the trail. The downtown Houghton Farmers Market starts at the, the second week of June, and that's every Tuesday going to mid-October from 3 to 7 p.m. And um, the waterfront trail will take you there as well, as well as the transit bus. And I know that there's a program available where you get free Husky Bucks, they're called, to use at the Farmers Market. So that's a really great opportunity. It's just a fun um, place to check out. There's great vegetables. There's also kombucha, bakery, other crafts. And it's it's just a, it's a fun thing to check out. It's right next to the library on the pier. And um, the same day as the farmer's market, we also have downtown music. And that's on Sheldon Avenue from 5 to 7 p.m. So what we do in Houghton, I'm sure you guys have heard, oh, it's all snow stuff. And this year it's kind of disappointing in that, that factor, but um, it will be coming as we keep saying. So cross country skiing is popular for us, snowshoeing, sledding at the Nara Hill, um, of course, downhill skiing and snowboarding at Mont Ripley, which is I believe opening on the 6th. And then we also have open skating at the D Stadium, and that's on Wednesdays and Sundays. We do not offer skate rentals, but um, you, you, if you have skates, you're more than welcome to come. 
Um, the other thing we always promote is dining and shopping downtown and our city sponsored events, which here's some pictures of some things that we do. The first picture is our winter wonderland event and that's held at the beginning of December. And that is located on the pier and there's usually horse-drawn carriage rides, free hot chocolate, bonfire, visit with Santa, that sort of thing. And um, this year we had opened the library for just a, a warm space and crafts and visiting. So if you can check that out next year, that would be great. The second photo is our fall fest that we host. And that's another thing located on the pier that again, we had um, horse-drawn carriage rides, apple cider making, um, I guess all things fall really. There was some donuts and pumpkins. And then the third photo is our annual Treat Street event, which is held in October every year for Halloween. And that's where we close Sheldon Avenue and you can come and um, trick or treat all downtown. Of course, that's more geared towards kids, but you're all welcome to come. You're kind of kids anyways. So it's a fun, fun thing to check out and there's music and lots of cuteness. So I guess that is it. Um, again, I would just urge you if you have any questions about being a resident of the city to just give us a call. Um, we're open Monday through Friday, eight to five. So thanks. And as a figure skater, I have to say that if you are interested in ice skating and you don't have skates, the SDC offers skate rentals. Uh, and I believe the open skate there is on Sunday. I don't usually go to open skate, but um, I do skate and I love to skate. So next I'd like to invite our career services representatives. So we have uh, Melissa and Nicholas. Hi there, my name is Melissa Michelson. And I'm Nick Quick. And we're part of the career services team. Um, so what we do is help all students get ready for their careers. We do everything that is related to career development and, um, and professional development. So Nick is gonna get us started with a few things. Where are we? There we are, all right. So we're located on the second floor of the administration building. You've heard that mentioned a few times with the Dean of Students office downstairs, International Programs and Services is right across the hall from us. Um, you can find us there. Our doors are usually open. Uh, every year we have uh, currently about 26 employer partners who are dedicated to uh, contributing to our program to hire Huskies. Um, we have about 400 employers actually coming to campus every year to recruit students. Um, we do 60-ish, maybe more events and programs each year. Some of those involve all the employers. Some of those are us putting things on for you to um prepare to meet the employers. About 4,000 students attend those things out of the 7,000 students here. So we actually interact with more than half the student body on a regular basis. And at the end of the day, there's about 1,000 interviews the day after career fair every semester. Uh, the median wage for co-op, if you do cooperative education, I'll talk about that in a little bit, is $26 an hour. Uh, our graduate career outcome rate is 92%. So 92% of our graduate students have a job or a plan right out of the door. For international students, that's 93.5%. And the median, median starting salary for grad students is $77,000 a year. Um, Melissa is going to tell you a little bit about how we get there. Yeah, because that's the main thing is like all of those numbers are really great and you want to be one of those numbers, but how do you get there, right? So some of the things that we focus on is first of all, first of all, is education and professional development. So that takes many forms. We hold a lot of classroom presentations. We do a lot of workshops in our, in our career services space. And we also do one-on-one -on -one meetings and appointments with individuals. Um, we host a lot of events. We have, uh, in the fall, we have what is called Career Fest. I'm not gonna talk a lot about that right now, but the campus is usually full of tents that are outside, um, full of employers waiting to meet you, all leading up to Career Fair. 
So all of the events that we have from the beginning of the semester until February 13th, which is the day of the career fair for spring, all gets you ready. All of those events are all geared to get you ready for the event of career fair. That's our biggest event that we hold two times a year. Okay, and another very important thing that we do in our office is we have uh, an employer relations employer program that brings a lot of employers who like to meet you. And so they help us to get you ready to meet them as well. We also handle any job postings that they have through Handshake. And then um, as Nick will talk about in a moment, we also house the cooperative education program from our office. And this is an opportunity for students to have paid work experience, which they can also receive credit for. And it allows them the opportunity to explore different career options um, before they graduate. So, and it makes connections because oftentimes these types of cooperative experiences lead to full-time jobs. And then lastly, we also collect data upon graduation. So when you graduate and you have a job, we like to know about it so that we can pass that information on to prospective students. Okay, so here is a list of some of our events. Now we have a table over there that has the same list that you will be able to take with you. So you don't have to take a picture or memorize this by any means. You'll see this across campus as well. And all of these will be also posted on Handshake for you to see. Okay, and now Nick about the cooperative education. All right. Um, so what is cooperative education? If you're not familiar with it, it is paid work experience while you're still a student. Um, you can take a semester and be enrolled in the cooperative education course and go work in a real full-time job and get experience doing what it is you want to do after you graduate. Um, the median graduate uh, level 2023 co-op wage was $26.75 an hour, um, but it varies a lot. And it really varies a lot depending on what program you're in. Um, and so a lot of students who are in higher demand programs will be making $40 an hour or more. Uh, you can be getting course credit. Uh, it's an online course, entirely online. I teach it on Canvas. Uh, you can get one or two credits for it, depending on what makes sense for you and your academic situation. If you are going, if you're an international student and you want to do curricular practical training, you have to be taking the co-op course in order to do that. And so you are not eligible for that until you've been here two semesters. Um, so this spring you'll not be eligible but you'll go to career fair anyways to meet people and then in the fall you'll go to career fair and you'll be looking for jobs for spring summer fall the next year when you can do cpt the cooperative education as a benefit is a great opportunity for exploration to find a company that might be right for you to find a position or a job that might be right for you after you finish graduate work um, or maybe to find out that you don't wanna do what you thought you wanted to do, and then you wanna look for something else. It's also a great opportunity for connections. Uh, you will meet people while you're on co-op who will bring opportunities for you in the future. Some of the top employers of our co-op students are Tesla, Mercury Marine, Cummins, Amcor. I'm not gonna read the whole list, but there's a lot of them here that you will recognize. Uh, the ones that are in bold are our corporate partners. They actually come here looking for you and also uh, contribute to our program. And some of the employers after graduation for graduate students, uh, by far the largest employer of our graduate students upon graduation is actually Michigan Tech. We hire you after we get done training you. Uh, but the, the number two is Milwaukee Tool. Um, but these are all companies who are known to hire our graduate students upon graduation.
So a big thing to remember from our uh, moment here today is that we are here to help you every step of the way. Please come and see us. Um, we will help you get ready for the career fair. We will help you get ready for your uh, career going forward. Um, if you want access to our resources, there's the QR code to find our website. Uh, I'm actually building a resource website right now that's housed on Canvas that you'll be able to get to so you can update your resume. We have, oh, you'll see our tables over there on the end. Kevin's sitting at it right now, he's waving. Um, we have some resources, including that schedule, our resume template, things like that on there to go. If you are an international student, chances are you have a CV instead of a resume. And yours is probably two or three pages. And American recruiters will look at that and go, what's this? So you need to look at our uh, resume template and get your one page resume going before you go see American recruiters at Career Fair. So come see us. We're here to help you. We're nice people, or at least we try to be. Thank you. Um, so just to kind of wrap a few things up here, um, I know that one of your admissions requirements is to bring either your official transcripts or your proof of degree to Michigan Tech. There are uh, five dates listed here that are dates that we request you come to drop those materials off at Michigan Tech if you've not already taken care of that. And the QR code here is how you can sign up for one of those times. I'll put this slide up at the end and leave it there so that if you miss it the first time, you can uh, take care of that. If you have questions about that degree requirement or that admissions requirement, we do have um, staff over in the graduate school, Ashley and Faye are standing over there and they'll be happy to answer your questions about that requirement. Make sure you're clear on what you need to do and uh, what, what the procedure is for doing that. And so at this time, what we really want to hope that you understand today is, is you're part of our community now. We are all Huskies, and we're so happy that you're here to join us for your education and the next step in your career. Um, all the people that you talk to today are here to help you. We want to see you succeed and, and achieve your educational goals. And so please do reach out to us at any time. Uh, any one of us can help you or direct you to the right person. Uh, and to further that then, so you got kind of a slight overview today, you know who we are, we know, you know who our faces are, you know who to contact, but we also have a host of other people out there for our reception. And there's also you as a community for you to meet each other, uh, to learn who your new classmates are. And so we hope you use the time in the next uh, kind of hour or so, there's um, some small snacks and some people that are here to hear, see you. So we have transportation services, the library, Wright D, career services, um, our grad school government, um, and there's some different organizations over there. So they're all additional people who are here to help you and support you in your educational journey at Michigan Tech. So again, welcome. We're very glad you're here. Um, and we hope that you'll come and ask us any specific questions that you have uh, over the course of the next, the rest of the afternoon. And so again, those are the times to drop off those transcripts and that QR code in case you missed it the first time. So with that, please enjoy the rest of your afternoon and we look forward to, to meeting you and uh, working with you as you work to get, get your degree here at Michigan Tech. Thank you.